So a lot of concern about the the news of the next black hat which is in the Netherlands, of course, in Europe, uh, around the middle of November, the 12th and 13th of November. Um, everybody's concerned because in the early pre-release of the program, there is um, one planned, a talk planned uh, on the topic, even the last pass will be stolen, deal with it. Uh, this is a presentation by Alberto Garcia and Martin Vigo. Um, so, has LastPass been hacked? No. Uh, is there anything broken with LastPass? No. Um, what these guys did was, or or should be obvious to us, but it's a great topic for the podcast. Um. And, and, and it's sort of about the issue of security boundaries. If you run LastPass in the remember password mode, that is where you have, you have enabled remember password as a convenience for yourself so that, so that you're not having to type the LastPass password in every time you want LastPass to be able to access your database of passwords in order to fill in a form. If you have that turned on, then what that means is LastPass has the information available to it without anything from you in order to do that job. Okay, so that means if something malicious got into your browser and had access to the last pass code in your browser and was able to watch it work and watch it perform these decryption processes, then it could have access to your database. And it's, so it's like, yeah, well, we all know that or we should. So this is the, again, one of these classic instances of the trade-off between security and convenience. Um, all anyone has to do to protect themselves against this particular reverse engineering based, it's always been there problem, is turn off or don't enable the remember last pass, la, sorry, remember password feature. In that case, malware can't statically glom on to anything in your browser and get a hold of your last pass database because the, the there's a critical piece of missing information which you provide on an as needed basis um squirrel for example has that fundamentally built in there is there isn't a remember password there we've had some people complaining in the in the news group about why do i always have to you know give it something every single time it's like because of this and and i've made it very simple to do that absolutely minimal but i refuse to to drop the barrier completely because it would open it to exactly this kind of attack and and so that there there is a trade off in convenience and security um and so if users are concerned about this and again, remember, this is not a remote attack. This is not somebody somewhere else who's able to, to reach across the Internet into your browser. This, this requires that your system already be compromised with a problem. And frankly, nothing is designed to withstand that. If you've got something in your machine, then, for example, it's able to get your browser transactions before they're encrypted on the way out uh, and 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 so forth and you know and have access to the the static storage in your browser so this is this is an interesting piece of reverse engineering um, uh, it, it's a it's a great teachable moment but this isn't the discovery of a massive vulnerability that nobody knew about in LastPass. the design is solid but the the 
the trade-off for the convenience of just going to a page and having it having the form your username and password magically filled in for you is that your browser without any of the input from you can do that and so that in, that inherently means that if something were to get a snapshot of it from the inside that they could and then reverse engineer the plugin they could do that too so um so i i wanted to make sure everyone knows this because there have been as this black hat uh program has spread around and about halfway down the page it you know it is this scary looking okay you know yes your last pass can be hacked it's like okay but there's nothing to see here uh, now and i this ask is uh, last pass to uh um so on my desktop, I have to re-enter the password, but I have to re I have it set up so I re-enter it only every 24 hours. That's just as bad. Yeah, unfortunately, I mean, what we really want to do is keep things out, keep bad you things out. You want to enter out. a password every time you want LastPass to fill in a form, basically. If What if you if, ask for a you, PIN? What if he says, well, not the full password, just a, a six-digit PIN? Would that be adequate? Because uh, LastPass offers that as a feature. Uh, unfortunately, it sounds like that would be open to brute force. And for that matter, so would your password. So you do right. need your last pass password to be How about a fingerprint? To be strong. So on iPhone or phones that support fingerprint readers, I have last pass to remember, set to remember my password, but to require a fingerprint authentication before it fills. That seems like that would be adequate. That is super solid. Okay. Yes. Because I don't want to have to that, type because I see this is the problem. I have a long random password. I don't right. have to type that every freaking time. Right. Fingerprint's um, good. Fingerprint's good. And what I did uh, for Squirrel is, is it, was to make an interesting compromise. Because we have this thing that makes brute forcing incredibly difficult. Uh, it's called N-Script, which is an algorithm that, that I designed. Essentially, it uses the S-Script uh, password-based key derivation function many times so that it doesn't take milliseconds, but it actually takes seconds. But you only have to do that once. So like the first time you're turning on your computer or you log in, you have to give Squirrel your entire long password. And, it, and then you sit there for five seconds while it verifies it with and this is a memory hard function that there is no way to short circuit but you only have to do it once from then on it 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 only requires that you give it a hint and and so essentially what happens is after performing all that work it it takes a snapshot and re-encrypts it using just the front of your password like the first four characters and it does still use a a one second long inscription so that it so that again even that cannot be brute forced but a single mistake in guessing wipes the 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 information it's using out of memory and requires you to then enter your whole password so it's it, it, it it's a it's a a careful compromise to, to, to keep the system easy to use. So when you're logging into a website, you just go, you know, bing, 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 four characters, and it says, okay, fine. Um, but somebody was, uh, walking up to your computer, if, if you've just, you know, uh, run off to make coffee, they can't log in as you because they won't know what those four characters are and any mistake, and it, it puts you back and requires your full password. So, so... All of these things inherently have a trade-off. But, Leo, this is only true until we get, for example, biometrics on Windows machines. Yeah. We have them now, for example, with the iPhone and, and Android. 